Welcome back to the Barry Charles Footy Show, the last show before the grand final, which is here tomorrow. Who is going to win, Brisbane Broncos or Penrith Panthers? Well, we will go through each player, player by player, and I'll give you the synopsis of what I think is going to happen in this game. But we're also going to talk about Reese Walsh, talking about the ugly mum fiasco at Fan Day. Sean Johnson, was he dudded? Absolutely. But in saying that, Caelan Ponga, again, I don't disagree with him getting it, but he, certainly on some of the dubious calls from the last few rounds, Johnson got dudded. And Ricky Stewart is apparently a dollar oh one to be the next New South Wales coach for 2024. Are you kidding? Are we going into the dinosaur age and we're going to go back to full guild as well? Or is it time for... The young bloods to come in, the Jason Rolls, McInnes, Willie Mason, those type of players, Boyd Cordner, someone like that to come in, Brett Morris, all these, I mean, Josh Morris, all these old players that have been around the trips, do some of these guys need to come in and try and recapture what Billy Slater is doing at Queensland? Well, anyway, well, let's get to it. Yes, let's get on to, the, let's get all the elephants in the room and we'll finish off with my grand final predictions. Um, Reese Walsh needs to grow up and he continues to prove that he can't grow up. He, just because a uh, fan um, says something funny about about yourself, about something, you don't just react to that. Just clearly is just um, a, a man who needs to work on his um, skills there. And going back to earlier in the year when he basically got Patrick Kerrigan and David Feet of the Lie and he still didn't get off, um, um, giving it an absolute garbage to the ref he needs to grow up and he needs to grow up fast i mean cocaine as well is he still doing that stuff i mean honestly uh, I, I just don't know about the nrl sometimes are they really doing enough to stop this rubbish coming out of the game it seems like every se every season we seem to see um, players do this sort of stuff in the, in the off season and obviously valentine holmes now is the next cab of the rank saying he didn't do it you, you, you're kidding me is a prank on wrong you just you're just sad you got caught let's just be fairly honest um but the stupid rule in the rlpa that you can't test in the off season it's absolutely ridiculous i mean come on if you did it in, in your in the other job you'll be you're sacked the nrl you're above it all i don't think so but well obviously brett stewart got right away for, for years because he only just got caught the last couple of years so clearly it's been around the game forever and nobody seems to care about it and we just continue. No worries. That's something the NRL should be caring about. Um, Ricky Stewart, $1.01 according to Andrew Johns to be the New South Wales coach. Um, Craig Bellamy in the line. I mean, the list goes on and on. People they should should go for. Do they really need another an old school one? Some people are saying, yes, Phil Gould, come back, son. I'm not saying they won't do a good job. But to be honest, it's time to get the youth in. Whether they're ready for it, it's 100% sure. But then Billy Slater just went boom like that. Um, but yeah, they've got to pick the right person here, folks. So you I mean, you could go from even a Jeff Tooby as well. I'll put his name up there with Cliffy Lyons. Put them both together. And they might get something done if you want a Tommy Rodonagus type approach. Um, but you've got the young braid of Boyd McCorner, Jason Rolls, Willie Mason. You can even add Ben Hornby to that list. Mick Innes. All these young coaches around the traps, and one of them need to get pushed up the rank or be the assistant, ready to take over in a couple of years. Whether any coach wants to do that, I don't, I'm not sure. But um, who do you really give it to? It's a bit of a catch twenty two. I don't, I don't think he should go to a club coach. I think he should be a coach that is not a club coach. Um, but where where does that lie? I'm not hundred percent sure. But um, yeah, I, I suppose if you want motivation, you go with Keith Stewart. If you want someone that absolutely tells you straight up, you'll go for Phil Gould or Craig Bellamy. Um, if you want someone more relaxed, you'd go with a Willie Mason type figure. So it's going to be an interesting conversation on who gets that role for New South Wales. Um, if it's Ricky Stewart, I'm not convinced that I'm not 100% sure at all if that will be the case. Um, Herbie Farnworth... Um, He's got, he's got to get through a test from what I've heard to see if he gets through to play in the big dance. We will see how that goes. That's coming through at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see how 
how that all goes with um, Herb Furby Harm, if he's ready to go. But obviously Corey Oates will come straight in and Jesse Arthur will move to centre this morning likely if there's a late change there. But um, getting back to this, the big game, yes, um, before the big game, Sean Johnson, was he dudded? The answer is absolutely. Sean Johnson was dudded every day of the week. Um, absolutely. Just um, in the round 25 and 26, he deserved some points. I'm not saying he was the best player on the field, but he definitely deserved at least one point. The judges didn't give it to him. Did, were they conspiring to go for Kalen Ponga? Um, who knows? But um, Kalen Ponga had a sensational end to the season, so I'm not disagreeing with that. Absolutely not at all. Um, do the rules need to change? Is three points too high? Um, I don't know, but it was a remarkable comeback from Kalen Ponga. Um, I remember Tom went to Roy Bridge, did the same thing. He was not doing well, and next minute, boom, 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 he did it. So I'm I'm not surprised. Um, well, obviously, another big talking point is how come Nico Hines didn't get the best player at um, Cronulla, but he somehow was the third best in the NRL. I'm just there, that scratches my head as well. I honestly thought he was, I mean, Nico Hines was the best player for Cronulla, so that was an interesting one. I think Cronulla got it wrong there, but who knows? Um, even considering the poor part of the season with Nico Hines, he still was the best player overall. Um, so, yes, so that's everything. But in other words, you can argue Sean Johnson got um, dudded, but I, I think Kane Ponga deserves it as well. Um, a tie would have been sufficient, but it wasn't to be. Ponga gets it done, and I'm lucky for Johnson. And I don't think Johnson will have the same year next year. He might have a good year, but when you add Roger Tuafasa Sheik to this team, if he performs, then it's going to be very hard for a Warriors player to get the points, unfortunately, for Sean Johnson, unless he comes out doing exactly the same as this year. But let's get to it. This is what you're waiting for. The final finale. Penrith Panthers versus Broncos. All raging hot favourites are the Panthers. Broncos coming to town to Sydney. Acor Stadium, can they get it done? Is there any sort of miracle way they can win this game? Or Penrith are just going to outgrind them and blow them away at the end? A few, few, a few story marks. You've got Crichton last game for um, the Panthers. Adam Reynolds getting close. Um, there's talks if he wins this game, he might retire on the spot. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I've got a funny feeling if Adam Reynolds did win, he'd want to go out a premiership winner. And what a way to go out, sets out of seven C's, but it depends on if you want the money, I guess if he wants another 800k, he'll play for another season. But going out a champion would be good, and he could just slip in to be an assistant coach just like that. That's my prediction, if he gets it done. Um, but yeah, him and Cleary, that's going to be one of the key parts of the game. You also got Reese Walsh and Dylan Edwards, and also the forward picks. But well, let's get to it. I'm going to go for each team's player, Opposite players and see who gives the points to and then round it up and then give you a final synopsis of what I think is going to happen in this game. Okay, so at fullbacks, we've got Dylan Edwards and Reese Walsh. Reese Lightning absolutely is just about the best player in the comp, but he can come up with a clanger, which he did against the Warriors, which down with Tensley to the left and ran all the way. If he was doing that against the Penrith Panthers, I think that's what could cost him the game right there. Because they don't give you much opportunities, the Penrith Panthers, most of the time. So if Reese Walsh is just going to give them an opportunity, watch out for Crichton with that intercept. Um, Dylan, yeah, so, um, Dylan Edwards is super reliable. You can expect everything you want. Last year's Clive Churchill medalist. He is a very good player. He's very talented, very, very underrated. He was outstanding last year. Um, it's tough. It's a tough one because you know what you're going to get with Dylan Edwards, Reese Walsh. You're not sure what you're going to get in the grand final, but I, I think we just have to get for excitement fact if Reese Walsh lights it up. Look out, Penrith. Are, I mean, are in a big trouble. Taruva and Cobo. Well, this is an interesting one. A similar sort of thing. Taruva has all the consistency. Does all the hard yards. Where Cobo can come up with something out of nothing plays, scoring in the corner. So um, an interesting subplot between these two, but. And then Cobo, obviously, from the start of the year, absolutely giving it to Kevin Walters on the podcast. He could be in redemption and show some faith to Kevin Walters to get it done. Or would he come up with the mistake that might cost him the game and he has egg on his face. Taruva, though, for me, I'm going to give the points to Taruva on this one. So it's one all at the moment. Tuggle versus Van Riff. Well, 
Yep, talk to the fan with it's not 100%. We'll see if he plays the big game tomorrow or Jesse Arpa's coming, but we're going to have to have a fan with playing. Um, fan with to me, and then if, if Arthur's comes in, um, to me, fan with has Targo every day of the week, and I think Targo's under a bit of an injury cloud, and it could be danger signs for the for the Panthers. Crichton versus Stags. Well, this could be the most entertaining. They got the best defensive player. It wasn't a long time ago you wouldn't see that about Crichton, but he is now. Versus the best attacking centre, Katoni Stags, pretty much. So it begs to differ who you think is going to get it done, but I think Crichton has just taken his game to another level this season. And to me, Crichton wins this one hands down. Toho versus Arthurs. There's no, this is a mismatch, Toho all day. And that could be where they get carved up here. I know Arthurs has played good, and I liked him at the Warriors. And he has improved, but that knock on, if he does that again against Penrith, they will get, could get annihilated. Luai versus Ezra Mann. Well, I think when you're looking at this back line, it's looking more and more the Penrith Panthers here for mine. Ezra Mann's had a great season, don't get me wrong, and he could have a stunner and he'll need to. He reminds me a little bit of Anthony Milford, so it's sort of, sort of, similar sort of trajectory. He can, can he go past Milford and go to the top or drop away like Milford? That's going to be the question mark for Ezra Mann going forward. But Jerome Luai, to me, he has a chance to really make a statement today. I mean, tomorrow, a real big statement and say, I'm the man and I'm not going anywhere. I may be staying at Penrith for a little bit of money because I want to win five premierships in a row. The Panthers dearly need them and they may need to drop their price up a little bit more to keep them. I've got a funny feeling, even though I thought he's going to go to the Bulldogs, I've got a funny feeling he might stay. It depends on his motivation. If he wants money, he's going to leave. If he doesn't want money and my chance of maybe getting more premierships, he'll stay. Simple case there, but Lua gets the points here. Clearia Reynolds, this is to me the biggest matchup of the wall, regardless of all the forward packs and all this. Whoever dominates this pretty much will win the game. And that's where the kicking game comes in. Adam Reynolds has a nice short kicking game, which is good. He's good at kicking to the corners. But the running game has not really been there for Adam Reynolds. He does it sometimes, but to me, that's when Nathan Cleary has the edge. He has taken his game, not at origin level, don't get it twisted, not good enough in origin. But an NRL level, he has lifted his notch. He is just about playing the best he's ever played. And I'm telling you right here, right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna label it. I haven't even got to who's who's gonna who's gonna pick. I think Nathan Cleary is gonna ice the cake here and be the Dali, I mean the Clive Churchill medalist in 2023. I went for Dylan Edwards last year, got it right. I think Nathan Cleary is gonna have a master class and he'll be lifting the trophy for the third year in a row, Nathan Cleary. I really do believe this. And I'm obviously you're saying you're always clear who I've already picked. Um I might as well just say it right now. They are going to win the Panthers and I think they're gonna blow them away. I really do have a funny feeling they're gonna blow them away. And this could be a big score line. There's a chance the root of Broncos can win, don't get me wrong. Broncos can win. There's no and Broncos obviously can win. But on everything the form says this year, Penrith are just too good. But Broncos have been the best likely team to give them a go, good go for their money. And with Flegler, Payne Haas, um, obviously big chances here. But yeah, Leota and Flegler, you could say are pretty even. I'm going for Leota just. But Kevin Walters, I mean Billy Walters could have a say. I and mean, he wants to have that photo like Kevin Walters. So he got that. And he takes out Mitch Kenny for mine. Payne Haas and Jane Fisher are pretty similar. But I'm going to go for Payne Huss on this season. Scott Sorison and Kurt Capel, again, pretty similar. But I'm going for Scott Sorison. Liam Martin, Jordan Ricky. this is a mismatch. Liam Martin, he's been outstanding this season. He could possibly be Clive Church Medicine, this is the way he's played this year. Isaiah Yeo and Patrick Carrington is a big, big one. If they can contain Isaiah Yeo, that goes a big way to beating the Panthers. That's going to be Patrick Carrington's job. Can he do it? I think he can. But the Penrith are one trick ponies. Cogger and Smoovy, I think I think the bench is a mismatch here. Cogger beats Smoovy all day long. Lindsay Smith beats Spray the Paikura. Spencer Linu absolutely gives it to Kobe Hedrington. And I the only one I've given Ken Palalisi maybe over Luke Garner, but that's another big definite. So yes. So my tips for this game is Penrith by a mile. I think they're gonna win 13 plus. So I think they're just gonna blow this team out of the park. Um the only thing that can save them. Anna Reynolds and Reese Walsh have a blinder with Billy Walters. All three of those players, and he's remember, going to have to have a big game. 
but Payne Haas, Flieger, and Patrick Carden have to contain Isaiah Yeo for a start, Moses Leona, and James Fisher Harris. Um, if they don't, this is going to be a whitewash, absolute travesty um, for all your Broncos fans out there. I'm not saying Broncos can't win. Broncos obviously have to stop Yeo. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the first player they got to stop. And then Nathan Cleary and and the forward rotation. And they got when those forwards go off, they need to bring on the players and they need to go out and out muscle them. That is the way the Broncos are going to win. Broncos, to me, I just got a funny feeling. Reese Walsh is going to do something, a clanger, drop the ball or something, and just cost his team the game. He can clearly win the game as well. Um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll fall on my sword if the Broncos win good on them. I just think Penrith are going to be too good in this grand final. I think they're the best team. And although I thought they were going to fall this season, I don't think they're going to. And I think they're going to really blow them away in the grand final. So that is my tip. Penrith Panthers to win. You can dislike it in the comments. Um, I'm just going what I've seen this season. Um, I love to see the Adam Reynolds story get a redemption story, but I think Nathan Cleary is going to blow this game apart and have a 10 out of 10 performance. I think he's been destined for this game, and I think he's ready to blow it apart. And I think he's going to go to the Australian jumper and be absolutely outstanding and put everyone away. I don't see anyone getting close to Australia this year. I think they're going to be booming out the gates. Um, even though I'm a Kiwi, I have to be a realist, and I can't see the Kiwis beating Australia on what I've seen. Doesn't mean they can't do it, but with Nathan Cleary at the home, it's going to be very, very tough. Anyway, thanks for watching. Enjoy the grand final, and I'll see you again next week.